So without further ado, um, I am going to introduce the very special guest. You've met him before, maybe. I don't know if you really know him. Perhaps. He's like kind of new on the scene. He like doesn't really have <laughs> Um, like a ton of a voice in the industry yet. So, <laughs> I mean, he's kind of a newbie, so you're going to have to be really nice to him. So without further take ado, it easy, take it easy. <laughs> I'm going to introduce my boss, Gary Kay. <laughs> hey, Steph, thanks for uh, giving me a quick one minute thing. Hey, we're bringing on Nicole Richardson, who has, who has single-handedly run the New Tech Lightning Rounds for the past two days. This is her fourth session. And I want to tell you a little bit about her because I feel like that she was, uh, she was, she, uh, she, I think you should know who she is. And I think that, uh, that, uh, you know, her, her background will speak for herself. I want you to click on her LinkedIn profile and I want you to help me get her a job. She has been furloughed by a open. She is in the market. Um, as many of you have been furloughed, she worked with the Venetian for 10 years, run, running their, uh, running their digital signage, uh, division. She literally was a digital signage manager at the Venetian Hotel, then went on to the station casinos, ran their digital signage systems for two years. She's got experience both on the manufacturer side and on the, uh, on the customer side. But most importantly, I want to thank her to, to be willing to spend two days doing this for us. I really appreciate your willingness to do this. And uh, I and like I, I all I can do is say thank you very much for doing this because I know that this this um, this I'm now seeing you on the screen. This is really cool. This this I know took a special amount of time. You had to do a lot of preparation to learn about some of the brands and companies and products that we have out here today. And uh, hey, Nicole, I figured I'd give you a plug. You're not willing to plug yourself. You didn't want to step up and say, hey, I'm in the market for a job. So I thought I would pop in here and do it for you. Nicole, first off, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you all for your support, everybody who has contacted me online. Can you guys hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, that have contacted me online. I just wanted to say thank you so much. Um, as we move forward to the new software lightning round, some things that I thought were really important for some of the new people that are coming on, as well as people who have been in this industry for a while. Um, I would suggest that you take a look back at both of the sessions for both days and kind of archive it because some of the things that may not make sense today will make sense later on as you move forward with your digital signage venture. OK, especially with uh, the keynote speaker, Beth Warren, um, and the multiple discussions about our ROI and ROO and uh, with Diversify on how to really understand who your client is before you start your digital signage network. So with all that being said, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our next software. Um, OK. <laughs> software person, which is Jeffrey Weissman. He's with uh, Navarro Labs, and this company is really exceptional. I've worked with them on one or two occasions, and their uh, interface is beautiful, okay? So like I said before, as you move forward with trying to decide how you want your CMS system or your software to work, you really need to understand your audience, your stakeholders as well as the future of your signage within that area or that arena that you're in. The hardware side is kind of logical and predictable, but the software is more personal because if you have your HR person or someone who's not creative handling the scheduling and then trying to figure out how to post PowerPoints or even in the situation that you have content being created by your in-house graphic design team, but then they're overwhelmed and you have to move out to dealing with a vendor and then how to incorporate and teach each one of those individuals how to use the software to schedule an update. That can be a huge learning curve if the software platform is too complicated. So understanding what the operator will be doing as well as the use cases, when the customer decides they want signage, as well as for the future of signage. So you definitely have to educate your customer as well as your yep. um, operators. Hey, hey uh, Nicole, uh, 
Yeah, I want to I want to just mention one thing real quick. Um, that software comment is really important because ultimately uh, it's easy to pick the hardware. It's hard to pick the software and understanding which is the, the fact that you have a balance. The stakeholders and the customer is really, really important there. And you're going to learn that from this session that's coming up here. So we're going to switch orders really quickly, Nicole. Uh, we're going to go with uh, George Preston from Spinetics first. So I'll let you go ahead and introduce George if you don't mind. And I'm going to I'm going to disappear while you're doing that. <laughs> OK. OK, George, um, I'm looking forward to your presentation. I haven't really worked with your company before, but I've heard it's got a lot to offer. George, are you there? Hi. Uh, thanks. Yeah. yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks uh, on behalf of the whole Spinetics team. We're delighted to be here, delighted to be part of Design, and thanks to Avixa DSF for putting this together. Uh, so my name's George Preston. I'm the North America Sales Director for Spinetics. Uh, we think at Spinetics that digital signage has has evolved. It's now something that anyone can buy without being an expert and without having to do lots of big design upfront. Uh, and to that, we're going to tell a story today of a Spinetics customer called Jessica. And Jessica went through that journey with Spinetics and solved her company's internal communications challenges. So let's meet Jessica. That's her on the right hand side. And she works for Abbott and Tyler. Abbott and Tyler is a corporate law firm headquartered in Denver, Colorado. And Jessica is their marketing and communications director. She reports to the CMO and the CMO has given her a task. And that's to find out how the A&T can communicate better to 60 employees in the building. There are staff drifting in and out of the office because of COVID. There are important client visits going on. There's regulatory information about their industry. And of course, there are just general company updates. And Jessica knows that digital screens are going to be the best way to grab people's attention. She's seen it working for other companies. The search doesn't start that easily. And Jessica finds that there are lots of companies offering some of what she wants, but not everything. And some of the terms she's seeing, she doesn't even understand. Plus, she's busy and she knows that if she fills in a load of forms on websites, she'll just get lots of sales calls. And that's something that she doesn't really have time for at this stage. What she really wants is something she can go to her senior management team with and have confidence that they will see the value. And she finds Spinetics and immediately notices some differences. First of all, Spinetics does everything. They make the devices for the screens, they make the software, and they make all the apps that she needs. And looking through spinetics.com, Jessica's reassured to find that their typical customer actually looks very similar to Abbott and Tyler Law. Even better, she finds she can try their cloud software straight away. And she does, and she finds it much easier than she expected to create layouts that look on brand dragging and dropping a few photos she has from around the company. Some layout suggestions are created instantly for her. And she finds that just by adding the Abbott and Tyler company font and the brand colors, everything gets a consistent look and feel. So the design part is practically done for her. She does have some questions. She wants to see if there's a way the Spinetics Aria cloud can connect to some of their other systems, for example. And she would like to create her own templates because something tells her this is going to be bigger than just the head office. Eventually, she also needs to tag and organize those devices. So right there within the demo, she chats to real people at Spinetics down there on the left-hand side of the slide. That's a real chat window. They're not bots, and those people answer her straight away. So just in this short space of time, she's gone from searching to seeing right in front of her some essentials of what she wants to see on her screens. She's now ready to start seeing things in action, and she wants to move fast. At spinetics.com, she finds Spinetics partners all over the country, including a couple of local vendors that they've worked with before. And that's a real help because setting up new vendors at Abbott and Tyler can take a while. And the local firm she chooses can do 80% of the setup remotely. All they need to know from Jessica in the beginning is the number of screens that she wants to work with. That company comes the next week and they install the players. 
everything's connected via the cloud. All the players need is an, is an internet connection. And the IT department's happy as well because they don't have another server that they need to maintain. So in just a few hours, the screens are installed. A player is fixed neatly behind each one. And Jessica is delighted to see that the demo content that she created when she was playing around is available in her new account. She even takes a photo while she's there and then she sends it straight to the new screens and it appears in seconds. So from day one, even from hour one, the installation is providing value. So much so, in fact, that she's approached by colleagues from all over the company who have content ideas that they'd like to see. And Jessica's ready for them because adding users within Spinetics Aria is straightforward. She can even give those users specific roles right down to individual screens and content. She knows, for example, that she wants the A&T logo on the screen at all times. And she wants to make sure nobody accidentally changes the important public content that she's assigned to the big screen in the lobby. Just as she thought, Jessica's initiative grows quickly beyond the headquarters and Spinetics Aria grows with it. With Jessica maintaining that important responsibility for the overall system, the senior leaders can now communicate with hundreds of employees in offices across the country. Each office has its own part of the channel to use for local team specific content. And as well as taking the load off Jessica to, to have to manage everything so she doesn't have to be a bottleneck, it also means that her project gets buy-in from employees in all the locations. It's not just that scalability that went into Jessica's choice of system. Spinetics Aria improves over time, ensuring that the latest functionality is always supported and supported reliably because Spinetics controls all of that stack of components. Jessica even gets new ideas on how to leverage their investment from some of these improvements. For example, wayfinding apps, which were added recently, helped guests navigate safely around the building when COVID restrictions meant that fewer people were there to help. Sometimes Jessica's management ask her for something specific. They can be quite demanding. And Jessica has the combination of that local vendor in her time zone right down the street, backed by Spinetics to deliver any kind of custom module that she needs as well. So one year on from their installation, they're now showing important dashboards. And that's something that the CEO of Abbott and Tyler is really happy about. Signage has become an intrinsic part of their internal commu communication strategy. All kinds of businesses around the world rely on Spinetics from local to global. And with 15 years experience in delivering every part of the solution, Spinetics tools can help you realize what you have in mind at your own pace, all without high pressure sales calls. Join Jessica and thousands of other professionals and entrepreneurs by trying Spinetics Aria yourself. It's free, there's no obligation, just takes a minute. Or if you have a project in mind and you want to get started even faster, please contact our sales team at sales at spinetics.com. Thank you. Hi. Uh your voice is so perfect. It seemed like it was a commercial. So nice job on that presentation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I just have a couple questions before we transition over to our next speaker. Um, in dealing with, okay, what is her name, Jessica? Okay, when Jessica has expanded her platform and she has multiple locations, is there a way of tracking content approval? So let's say HR wanted to post something in one, city or state and she everything would have to bottleneck through her for content approval or is there a process within the application to allow that to occur there certainly is so there are two things <clears throat> that facilitate that uh, the first is uh, a view which lets you see an audit of everything that has been changed what we find that many clients want is not necessarily to have to intervene in every single action but they at least want to know what happened so that's more of a kind of passive control. Audit shows you who changed what at which time. And so you can definitively say if something was on the screen or not and who put it there. And then you can increase that to an active control, kind of interventionist way of controlling content by saying that according to a particular tag, if a piece of content 
goes on a particular screen, it must go through a certain uh, number of steps first. So it could be sending an email to a person, Jessica, she has to click a yes in the email. It could be something that she sees within the interface. Oh, that is very nice. Um, another question would be, um, what type of file formats are, do you choose for your uh, CMS? Like, are you, what types of videos, what type of JPEGs or anything like that? Or is it a specific it's a, file type? For? It, it's, it's the opposite of specific, it's anything. Uh, when we were designing Spinetics Aria, one of the first bits of feedback we had from a from a, a, a client who wasn't at Spinetics, but we were we were interested in their feedback, they said that one of the most frustrating things was uploading very large files, it getting to ninety nine percent, and then telling them file format not supported with no more information. So at the back end, we've really made Spinetics Aria accept everything, and you can throw any type of file type at it. I mean, within reason, of course, and then the platform takes care of encoding that file not just for the screens that you have, but keeping a high resolution version in case later, for example, you add higher res screens. Oh, that's fantastic. Way to go. Um, last question before we transition, is there um, reporting within the software? So if you need to provide a statement or you know some type of reporting that shows that this content played at this particular time for you know, a vendor or advertiser? Yes. There is, there's a, a proof of play section, which is connected to audit. Right. So you can tag certain items or certain pages on the screen and just do a sort of filtered view by those. If you have an advertiser, for example, or if in the case of a law firm, regulatory information, which they have to show, you can show proof that that was on the screen all the time or at certain times. Thank you so much. And I look forward to following up with additional questions that have come in at the last panel discussion. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, Thank you. Next up, we're going to have uh, Jeffrey with Navari Labs, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be pretty spectacular. So thank you so much. OK, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the next 15 minutes on Navori. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a screen share so we can go through a PowerPoint. Uh, from there, I'm actually going to do some live demonstrations, and, and we're going to hopefully cover a lot of good inf information for this uh, new Tech Lightning round. So let's go ahead and enter that screen share. And now we should have this PowerPoint up. This presentation is really about how digital signage is evolving and the impact that AI has had on digital signage. And as we all know, um, you know, some of the basics are to have a very easy to use software, something simple, something easy to manage, but really we're trying to take this now to another level and make it so that digital signage can play an even more crucial role in the physical environment. So what we'll start with is a little history of Navori. Uh, we're a Swiss company. We were founded in 1997. So today we have about 23 years we've been in the business, uh, projects in about 115 different countries. Very proud to have uh, sold and deployed over 1 million endpoints globally. The interface is available in about 38 different languages. Navori is a platform that can be used for very large projects, but not exclusively. We also handle small, medium projects. There, there really isn't a too big or a too small. Our largest rollout single end user network is about 35,000 nodes, and our smallest network is one node. Um, it's a solution that plays into a lot of different markets and verticals, and uh, also in terms of geographic presence, uh, we have a very balanced exposure. So as mentioned, we're a Swiss co company, so our headquarters is in Lausanne, uh, actually not far from the previous presenter, Spinetics. Um, but we also have a North American headquarters here in, um, in Montreal, and that's where I am today. You can see the other little dots represent some satellite locations, which are used to serve various local markets in which we have uh, good presence. Navori, with our focus exclusively on software for the past uh, 23 years, uh, we've been fortunate enough to have uh, good success and benefit from uh, being a company with zero debt and year-over-year -year average growth of about 33%. And what we've done is we've focused that, that growth on innovation. So every year we reinvest into the platform. So the largest team at Navori is actually the engineering team and the developers. Uh, we make a habit of putting at minimum 20% of our revenues into R&D. 
uh, what we're essentially doing is we're studying constantly the market. We're looking at the trends or looking at the new technology we kind of take a long view and we say okay what does the tech look like for the past 36 months and then we take a medium view what does it look like for the past year and then a short view even the last six months or 90 days to see how it's evolving and then lastly we look at customer feedback we listen to our clients we look at what are they trying to do what are what do their futures look like what do they wish the platform can achieve and we incorporate this and we're constantly coming out with new things. And the focus of today is to really drill into, drill into what are those new innovations. And you'll notice that AI and artificial and um, c computer vision plays a significant role in that and uh, impacts the drill signage in a great way. But first, we're going to look at a trend that's helped our industry scale, which is simplification. And when you think of simplification, um, it's not just on a user interface standpoint. It's also from a hardware perspective. A great software should give you flexibility. And we're going to talk a lot about flexibility, options, and choice as we go through the presentation. And one of the things you may have heard recently is something called system on chip. One of the benefits of this is you cut out a lot of the clutter. So by removing a bunch of points of failure, you're actually getting a solution that's far more reliable. That would be one. Two, you're actually um, getting a simpler warranty in SLA because the display vendor and the, ch and the media engine is actually guaranteed by the same company. And I guess the third would be you're driving your cost down. So there's less uh, capital cost for deployment, which helps encourage uh, networks to move from POC to rollout, which is what the industry is aiming for and ultimately the end objective. But of course, having one solution is not enough. So you need to have a software that it can be like an umbrella. So cover all different types of applications. And you should never start with hardware. You choose hardware and function of the content and the application and the end result. In some cases, a tablet might be the optimal solution. In other cases, it might be an external box driving a large LED screen. It might be a system on chip for a single endpoint. Um, you need to have variety. So a good CMS, and in this case with Navori, we support all major operating systems, so Windows, Android, Samsung Tizen, LG WebOS, and BrightSign OS, giving lots of options and ultimately flexibility to the customer base to manage all these endpoints under a single CMS uh, with a single simple user interface uh, without essentially creating lots of operational efficiency. Moving that to the next point, and this is really uh, on topic with today, is smart content and how to achieve smart content. So in a nutshell, when we think about smart content, we're really, I'll, I'll use an example. We're saying, if I give simple instructions to two different players, at any given point in time, those two players may opt to play something different. And the reason they'll play something different is because the circumstances at those two physical locations is different. Those circumstances could be fixed or they could be situational. An example of something fixed would be, imagine I am a convenience store and I have some locations that are attached to a car wash and some that are not. In the case that I'm attached to a car wash, I might want to receive promotional content about the car wash. If I was not, I would not want to receive that content. And you could do that using what's called fixed tagging, where I assign that characteristic to the appropriate locations. What's harder to achieve and what we're going to focus in on is the situational piece where, for example, if it's hot out, I may want to advertise an ice cream cone, whereas if it's cold, I may want to put a hot chocolate or go one step further. If I'm in a shoe store, I may want my inventory system to drive what products are being promoted based off of availability or even one step further. If I'm in a bank and the waiting line is longer, I may want my playlist to be longer, whereas if it's shorter, I may want to shorten the duration of what I'm showing. So the idea of smart content is really about adjusting what's showing on the screen based off the reality that's happening in the space where that screen exists. So let's look at a new innovation that takes that into account. So here we're looking at a new solution that Navori has released this year in the midst of the pandemic. The aim of this solution is to incorporate computer vision and AI into digital signage to help um, keep consumers engaged, feeling safe, and of course, uh, going about their regular habits. So what this solution does is it manages occupancy and it does so by controlling social distancing, uh, keeping count of how many spaces are left inside of a store or physical environment, um, informing folks of the waiting time and also doing mass detection. Now, what's really 
excellent about this solution and what really changes the game is the fact that it's more than just a sensor and it's actually able to display the information, but yet again, it allows you to also personalize it. So you can really make it your own. So instead of creating something that's just creating a counter, we're actually incorporating it fully into the CMS. So you can still have your promotions and all your other content and information alongside the occupancy control solution. And if you think about this one step further, what we're actually doing is able to show data in real time based off of what we're all able to allow that data to impact and make decisions on what should play on the screen. And I will absolutely be showing a real example of that momentarily. So if we continue on and we think about um, this solution access control and we go again one step further, what happens after the pandemic? So, well, we know that we need something that's future proof. So we're gonna take that exact same concept and way of thinking and apply it to something that will drive continuous improvement. So if we look here, we end up with our yet another solution that we have released, which is a analytics platform. And the aim of the analytics platform is to essentially do for the physical world what people have already been doing for the online world for quite a bit of time. So when you think about analytics, uh, you know, let's let's use online as an example. You search engine optimization, you look at your website, you monitor visitors to the website, unique visitors, stay time, how long people are taking on link, clicking on links, uh, the path they're taking to get a conversion either through a web form or a purchase. And in the physical world, people are looking for the exact same information, yet it's not accurately available until now. So the goals of the analytics platform are really to help people manage the physical space. So waiting time, product assortment, uh, store design, also staffing, efficiency of employees, peak waiting times. Uh, the second goal would be marketing and merchandising, uh, understanding what products to offer, what's working, which campaigns are people looking at for how long, measuring the impact on the audience, and all that with the ultimate goal of continuously improving the customer experience. So what I'll do is I'll show you some actual examples, a little video here, and we'll kind of narrate through it. So we see a lady coming in and a code is assigned. Then a man comes in, a code is assigned, gender and age is detected for both. Stay time is calculated and she exits the space. Now, we'll see she re-enters the space and you can see that the visit status changes to returning. So now we know the difference between a new customer and a returning customer, which is extremely powerful. Um, if we go one step further and look at another example called attention span. So here we'll watch the lady walk by the screen. Up to the screen, content stays the same, attention is measured. Then a man comes, content changes to the, um, more appropriate item and the digital signage has done its job. So now let's move ahead and look at this in live practice because a PowerPoint is great, but what's really um, makes the difference is can we do it in real life? So let's go ahead and everybody should now see a live view of a camera. And what I'm going to do is put Murphy's Law to the test and you should actually see me walking up the hallway right now. And on the screen here, you see a count. And as I walk by and exit the room, that count comes up to 26. So you can see it ticked up because I exited the room. Now that's a real time change of the metric based off of what's happening inside of my office, which is a physical space. If I walk back in and I approach this area over here, the software ticks down to 25 and ultimately should have changed to give me a sign that I'm not wearing a mask, but we'll cross that road after. What we'll do now is we're gonna show you a couple other examples of triggering and smart responsive content. So I'm gonna go ahead and pivot the camera to show a trigger. Give me one second. Let me do it this way. So now we've got a wider view. There we go. And we're gonna look at two other examples of triggers. 
So the first one is going to be a physical interaction with a button. You can think of this as a sensor or essentially any event happening in a physical space. So here I have a video wall running content, and this is a big red button. If I push the button, instantly the content changes on the video wall, and it plays a new message. So once again, if I push the button, content changes and plays a new message. Another example would be here with a kiosk. Uh, this is a wayfinder. So this behaves uh, exactly like any other digital signage in its regular state, taking its programming, doing what it's supposed to do. And if I were to touch the screen, right away it enters into this kind of interactive mode where I can now navigate through it. And then I'm going to get this kind of rendering that's going to show me where to go inside of this space to uh, to get to my destination. What's really interesting here is as long as I interact with it, it's going to keep into this interactive mode. If I were to step away, now a timer is going to start. And based off of how long I'm inactive on that screen, it's going to convert right back to its regular state as a simple digital sign. There you go. You can see it change back. So those are some examples of smart content, and hopefully we've been able to cover uh, with some of the new products how AI can drive smart content and automate digital signage. For more information, uh, we would love to speak with you, give you a demo of the platform, uh, answer any questions you may have. So please give us a call or visit us at Navori.com. Thank you very much. That was amazing. Can we get him back on the screen? Yeah, give me one second. So how do I get my camera up here? <laughs> it's because you said Murphy's Law, you know that, right? <laughs> yep, exactly, it always happens. No. Can you see me or no? Not yet. Okay. Well, I'll ask you some questions in the midst of that anyhow, okay? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. First of all, testing Murphy's Law was risky, but way to go, okay? Um, the first question that I have, and we only have a couple seconds, so the first question is, yep. is the system tracking people GDR PR complaints? Is the facial detection storing images of people? So no images are stored, no data is stored, and uh, yes, the system is fully GDPR compliant, and it's also the only system that's fully incorporated into a signage back, at, back end. So you've got both the analytics and the digital signage piece that are going to sync perfectly together, and that's how you get the um, content to be smart, and that's how you ensure that the digital signage is actually responsive to what's happening in the physical space. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time. Please stay on so we can follow up at the end of the session uh, for the full panel. And we're going to move forward and introduce Alex with Wallboard. Alex, are you here? Are you okay? I guess I'm on and I'm ready to go. All right. Well, perfect. Well, first off, thank you and hello, everyone. Um, thanks for joining today. I definitely appreciate it. My name is Alex Van Pelt. I am the US platform manager for Wallboard. Uh, to kind of talk a little bit, Wallboard uh, you know, is a software company that specializes in providing a cloud-based digital signage solution to businesses. Uh, now that there, you know, there's there's a lot of digital signage companies out there for sure, and I know that we're on short time, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into what makes our solution a little bit more unique. So let me go ahead and hit next here. So to talk a little bit about our platform is to talk about four major key characteristics, and the first one is easy to use. Um, our user interface is one of those that we like to really kind of boast about because we like to provide one of the best experiences today on the market to not only the content creative teams, but as well as the digital signage network admins, as well as managers. So at that point, as the content development goes on and they have this rich platform uh, to be able to utilize that uh, editing experience, on the same end, the managers, the network admins, 
the you know general admins of the system are going to be able to easily understand what's going on with their displays as well as understanding how to easily deploy the new presentations as well as schedules. Now this kind of leads into our second key characteristic is that content creation. And the fact is that our platform, our system is got a full suite of content creation functionality. Now this is going to be very similar to Microsoft PowerPoint as well as Adobe Photoshop. And within this platform, this editor experience, we have a drag and drop experience that allows you to make any changes to any of the widgets that you bring into what is our blank canvas. So we're not locking you into any particular zones or formatting just like that. So you have the capability of doing what you want. Uh, now within that content creation leads into our next key characteristic, which is data driven. Now within our platform, we make it very, very easy to connect live data. And that live data could be whether it's a simple, super easy to use Google Sheet or a complex enterprise database. And what we do with that is that we take that information and feed it into the actual content creation editor that allows you to make connections from the actual uh, data and provide connections to simple text widgets, images, as well as videos, as well as into data-driven uh, dynamic charts and interactive activities, as well as create connections so that we can trigger responses based along different data changes. And then finally, the, the last of these uh, four key characteristics here is our versatility. Uh, with our platform, you know, we want to make sure that customers get the latest and greatest whenever new technologies exist. And with that, within the Wallboard platform, we do that without having our customers overpay for any type of custom developments or upgrading packages, things of that nature. Everything is part of the particular license. All right. So our Wallboard's product offering, we kind of have this into four key characteristics or key characteristics on the last side, four major product offerings here. Uh, the first one is our digital signage. So with that, the, you know, ex what we started out with is our digital signage creative uh, capabilities as well as our normal CMS opportunities. And so with that, we allow our end users to build a digital signage experience and solution that really meets their needs. Uh, whether that's menu boards or retail environments or corporate communication uh, within our content editing tool, they're going to have the ability to do exactly what they want to potentially do. Now, with that, we were able to expand past the digital signage market from the different, you know, uh, avenues of which media player connected to what TV in the realms of providing a unique experience within our Windows environment, which is through our desktop broadcast application. So with this desktop broadcast application, this really, really allow businesses to quickly send important alerts, notifications directly to desktops, uh, as well as, again, taking advantage of those digital signage capabilities, whether it's corporate communication or HR messaging, or actually bringing in, again, that live data connection to show off KPIs or potential call center metrics, things of that nature, just directly at the end user's desktop. And with that, again, that's going to utilize the exact same content editor that we're building out the digital signage experience. Now, we were able to expand past that and go into a little bit of a different market than a, a lot of other CMSs uh, have done. And with that, we actually partnered up with HP and provided a solution to their print work path. So on all the HP, MFP, large format printers have, that have that small display, we are able to bring the wallboard application directly to those printers. And so that you can take that generic printer screen and turn it into digital signage, get another way to bring in your custom branded marketing experience to those printers that everybody walks by and uses at least a couple of times a day. And so with that, we were able to expand past the normal realms of a media player in your TV or on your desktop, but again, to another appliance that actually is very frequent within every office. Now, in that same office environment, we were able to take our same content editor and connect it to a meeting room scheduler. So with that, we can actually create fully customizable meeting room signs as well as integrate digital signage into those meeting room signs through our content creation tool. And with that, be able to potentially book rooms, see what rooms are actually booked, as well as potentially you know, create environments that you can easily ad hoc book a room and then expand out the time as you need to. 
So with that, I'm going to actually move over into a presentation and demonstration of our software. Um, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is start sharing my screen. So with that, I should actually, you should see my screen at this moment. And this is our wallboard interface. So real quick, what I'd like to kind of talk about is what we're, how, how we actually access this. And this is all through a web browser. So in this instance, I'm just using Google Chrome. I've gone to my URL. And from there, I'm actually logged in with my credentials and I'm seeing my unique portal. And within this portal, it's really split up into two major areas. The top area being our screens. And the screens, this is our direct representation of the media players that are running the wallboard application. Now the media players that we support, I mean, Windows 10, Android, BrightSign, as well as the Samsung and LG SOC displays. And from there, you can download an application and install it on those devices. And once that's connected, you're gonna actually see a direct representation of that screen within your platform like so, with a colorful screenshot letting you know what's happening on that screen, as well as the name of that device and what presentation is attached to it. Now this leads into the second half of this, which is what type of presentation that we can attach to it. And we actually have three ways to deliver information to your screens. Uh, the first one being loops. This is what we like to call Digital Signage 101. Uh, we've created a very simplistic loop editor. And with that, you can bring in your full, size, full screen images, full screen videos, as well as create unique messages and place those in a very easy to use timeline and adjust those times or how long each message needs to be potentially presented for. And at that point, it's just, again, a very easy way to bring that information to your screen. Up next is our contents, and this is really our bread and butter. This is a more advanced editor, and within this more advanced editor, we're going to provide you a blank canvas that you have the ability to drag and drop the widgets of your choice, as well as make unique property changes to those widgets to express the information that you need to express. Now, alongside you know your standard digital signage application here, what you're going to have the ability to do is actually do more complex items like connect that live data and allow live data to be potentially brought in and have that be a part of your presentation so that files through and fills through in real time. In addition to that, within our contents, we can actually create interactive experiences that allow your customers to really get a full engagement uh, opportunity within the platform. Now, and outside of those two options, our content then can continue to expand with integrations to sensors so that you have the capability of connecting sensors, whether it's an occupation sensor or some sort of simple button. But at that point, we can trigger our content to react to those zeros and ones changing and allow your, again, your end user to have a unique experience. Now, finally, we can take those contents and put them into a schedule and just allows me to play the right content at the right time. And it's a very simple and easy use uh, process there. So what we're going to do is actually look at the content editor and see how easy it is to make changes. So first, I'm going to right click on this content here and you can actually see a preview of this within your web browser. And we can actually get a good understanding of what this is going to potentially show. So we can see what will be on our display whenever we actually send this out. Now, if I want to make changes to this, I can go ahead and left click on it. And that's going to bring us into our content editor. And within this content editor, one of the major things that you can see here is our blank canvas. And again, this is a direct representation of your media player that is connected to your display. So from there, we have this video that's playing. I can simply go ahead and select it and I can resize it, place it wherever I want to potentially place it, as well as add rotation to it so that whenever I want to, I can make things unique. Now, whenever I click save here and then I click play, what's going to happen is I'm going to actually be able to see those changes happen in real time and be able to preview them while I'm working on it before I ever send it to a media player. Now we have quite a few widgets that you can bring in and each one of them is unique to itself. So besides your standard text, images and videos, we can bring in weather information as well as the ability to create forecasts up to nine days. We can bring in image and video playlist galleries as well as direct streams, whether that's RSTP or UDP or even an HDMI uh, if you have the correct media player. We can do more complex things like actually work within wayfinding through one of our partners, which is Mapwise, which is a premier indoor wayfinding experience. Now, whenever I bring any of these widgets into our canvas, you'll notice that 
whenever I select it, I'm greeted with the properties on the right hand side. And these properties allow me to make full changes of that particular widget. And it's not a global property, it is just unique to itself. And I can then bring in another uh, image widget and be able to make those changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save here. And I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this. And now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is switch back over to my uh, presentation here. And we will go ahead and lead into any type of Q&A at that point. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Hi. Okay, so we have just a couple minutes, so I'm gonna try and keep this one uh, really simple. Um, in, let's see, thank you for showing the demonstration of your interface, okay? Um, I think that's really important because that goes on to the topics that we were discussing since this morning. Um, depending on what your needs are, will determine the type of CMS or user interface that's gonna be more comfortable for that particular person, okay? Or that particular organization. So in your situation, um, are most of your clients in education, retail, where are you stabilized at? Well, I think that's something unique to the wallboard experience is that we don't necessarily have a direct vertical that we play within. Our customers through our partners are all over the place, whether it's education in you know, K through 12 or higher education, as well as in the retail environment and also corporate communication. Uh, it's kind of all over the place. And the thing is, is that they're utilizing our editor, the same editor across each one of these verticals in just different you know, ways that are gonna fit best for them. So in those retail environments, they're utilizing our advertisement feature within our loops to be able able to track and basically make a, you know, again, um, the ability to send proof of play, pro, uh, play information over. And then in the corporate environment, they're connecting live data, they're having that data trigger content responses, and making sure that the right information goes to the right screen at the right time whenever it comes down to, hey, this number is low, why is it low? Uh, and so at that point, we can direct more information or more attention to that. And so again, the same editor being used in a quite a few different ways in that instant. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to welcome back the rest of the team. Okay, um, we had quite a few questions that came in, but I'm gonna try and group everybody together. So we'll start with uh, Navari and then work our way around the four squares, okay? Um, reporting is a big feature. Do you guys offer uh, customized reporting for each software platform? We'll start yeah, with you, Jeff. So, sure. So, of course, reporting is always critical, especially, you know, in certain markets, it's it's everything. So, we offer uh, detailed reports when it comes to both uh, user auditing in terms of activity, but also playback analytics, so you know what played, where played, how long did it play for. Uh, that data can be easily visualized through the interface or through API. You can grab it and bring it into another system to visualize it in a different fashion, or you have an export function where you can bring it into a XLS file. Okay, and moving over to Spinetics. Yes, it, it, it's the same as um, in my answer to your question before, Nicole. Uh, auditing, reporting uh, uh, according to needed regulations, but also we go further than that. And um, as with the Navori platform, it's exportable as well. That's cool. Okay. Okay, sorry. Alex? With the reporting. Yeah, and in, in regards to reporting, I mean, I feel like we're all checking the, the box here. <laughs> um, I okay. will mention okay. in regards to the reporting on the wallboard side of things, you know, we're grabbing that same information, we're providing it, whether it's through an exportable feature or through our system. Uh, but one feature that we're kind of excited about that is a newer development for us in regards to our platform is our ability to, one, of course, grab audience measurement as well as measurements based along uh, sensor engagements with whatever type of sensor that you connect to in regards to our platform. Oh, that's an extra bonus. Yes, you're right. Okay. Um, most of you, let's see. You can use I would. I would add in there. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
Hello? I would add in there that it's the, it's the same for us. We With the analytics platform, you can actually compare the two tables. So you can associate what was happening in the environment on the screen versus uh, what was the, who was actually in, or the profile of the person in front of the screen, how long they looked at it and what media they were looking at. And that way you could derive the effectiveness of each campaign that you're showing. Glad you said it like that. Um, for those of you listening, uh, understanding the effectiveness of each campaign can be really crucial to um, adding different things to your playlist and getting your return on investment as well as the objective. Because if you're putting up content that you notice that no one is interested in, it's pretty much mute for your signage. So making sure you have that uh, those that type of reporting will benefit you long long term. Okay. Um, do any of the reporting offer device management or health options associated within the CMS of any of your platforms? Absolutely. Um, so we have robust monitoring features where you can monitor both the health of the client application, but also the health of the platform that it's running on. Uh, so you can know the status. You could also, uh, through a watchdog, know if there's any issues. You'll be alerted of those issues uh, before they occur because there's a preload function. So whenever something's playing, um, whatever's playing next is actually loading in the background. Uh, that way, if ever there's an issue during preload, we can report it and then the system knows to skip that media. So it's also preventative and corrective in that sense. And then we have the ability to monitor and control hardware, whether that's on and off, reset, reboots, and control that all through uh, profiles so that it could be done at scale very easily. Oh, that's amazing. OK. Moving on to George. Yeah, uh, I don't know about about you, Nicole, and the others on the call, but when I travel around the country, or notwithstanding COVID, but when I'm normally on business travel, I I rarely go a whole trip without seeing a digital signage screen, at least one that's not working properly, either in an airport or a hotel or in a shop window. And most of the time, those failures are down to the fact that the the technology, the endpoint isn't really being very well managed. And often it's because the operating system isn't talking properly to the rest. Spinetics has its own operating system. So we maintain an operating system, which means that we can get very, very close to the metal, as it's called. We know if the screen's been turned off, for example, something which you can't take for granted. And it explains why so many installations you see blank screens, because no one's been told the screen isn't working. Um, also, it allows us to keep the firmware, so the, the operating system of the device up to date in the same in step with the web application. So we know if we're going to connect to a new data feed from a third party, if that needs to change because it needs a new type of encryption or something, we can upgrade that on the operating system. We don't have to depend on a third party to bring that. And I think that that's uh, really important when it comes to reporting. You can say what your system put out, but being able to guarantee as close as you can that something was on the screen because you control that whole stack, I think that's something that we do uniquely at Spinetics. Yes, that's very important. <laughs> okay. Well, so on the, uh, the wallboard side of things, again, you know, we have the, the same type of hardware analytics. Uh, we do present it in a very graphical uh, interface that allows you to choose really how long you want to look back on that potential player's health. And I can speak from our support teams, uh, you know, uh, just ability to provide great support is the fact that they constantly use that to make sure that, you know, whenever it comes down to the devices, which again, we support a wide number of media players that we're always looking at analytics, trying to understand, is it some type of network communication error or is it something within the player itself where we're we seeing the spikes? And at that point through those, that, that hardware analytics functionality in our platform, we're able to do do that and provide that to our end users just by simply right clicking on the screen of their choice and choosing you know screen analytics and from there they get to choose how long they want to look back as well as compare it to other devices so if they see one that I know is my golden child right that's always running properly I can go ahead and compare it and see if there's any anomalies between the two um, and so with that we do provide that capability of just kind of making sure your hardware is working exactly as it needs to potentially be working Okay, I considered this uh, part of reporting a huge advancement because when I first started within this industry, um, let's say you had a contract with an entertainment company and you definitely have to say or show the ROI associated with that particular screen. 
okay? So if an ad is supposed to be playing for an entertain, entertainment venue and you're not going to stand or have someone stand out in front of it to make sure that it showed up, and that the player was working. So some of the initial CMSs did not communicate with the media players. So you can say the content played, but if the media player was turned off or the screen was turned off, the information was incorrect. So for those of you just starting, this is extremely important to know that the media player, the content, and the screen are all being report information is being reported back correctly. So you don't have to spend the extra time and money to have someone physically go out to triple check those things, okay? Um, we have about two minutes left, so I'm gonna go to individual questions. So with Navari, okay, um, you had a lot of information and it's really nice to see you have so many offers within your, your service. Um, do you offer training and is it in person? Is it online? Is there a certification? Because there's so many different levels to what you offer. So so all of the above, actually. So yes, we have training. Uh, yes, we do it online, especially during a pandemic. Uh, yes, we do it in person, less during a pandemic. Um, but most importantly, I tried to zero in on what are some of the newest innovations. What, what, I, what I really didn't focus on during the presentation was the crux of the software, kind of what I would consider the table stakes of digital signage, which is, you know, the easy interface, the beautiful UI, the design tool. You know, I tried to demonstrate how can we level it up and uh, what's really new and driving our industry forward. But um, obviously, yeah, it's, it's a lot to cover in 12 minutes and there's an unlimited amount of resources available for people who want to learn more. Excellent. Okay. Um, and let's see. Sorry, one second here. Okay, going, another question that came in is, when you're within the software, I know Alex spoke about this, but when you're within your CMS, is there an opportunity to view multiple screens, okay, at one time to verify what a live stream, or is it only for individual or group areas? Like how many can you see on a screen to verify live what's actually playing? Uh, we can start with, George. Sure. Yes, in the Spinetics ARIA interface, you get a sort of stacked bar chart in the schedule of all the players you have. You can filter them by tag, but uh, to the left-hand side of each one, there's a preview of uh, whatever's showing on the screen at the time with no more than a one-second delay. Oh, that's great. Okay, uh, moving on to Alex. Yeah. Um, at Part of my presentation, we kind of highlighted yeah. on what we see inside of the screen area, which again is you know a screenshot that's coming from one of the media devices that's running your application. Now, in regards to that, the screen, we offer the ability to manage those screens. So besides the view that we showed, we can go ahead and show that list preview and get a just a full understanding of all the devices that are a part of it. Uh, in addition to that, we can actually manage those uh, screens within groups. So you, just like folders on your desktop. And that will just kind of allow you, if you need to narrow your focus, you can. Uh, as well as we can search by tag. It's, it's kind of meant to be how you want to manage your devices in your particular campus. So. Okay. And Jeffrey? Yeah, so you have a very, you know, similar to, uh, to the analytics, you have a very simple dashboard where you can see the status of all the players. You can see what is currently playing on them. And, and of course, you can grab a screenshot and, and you can visualize that in real time. Okay, I have a really good question that came in. Okay, so there's an individual that works at a museum and they usually deploy long content, like long videos, I'm assuming, uh, in their exhibit halls um, on a standalone player. We also have digital signage looping, uh, mostly slide content. Would you suggest playing a long form video or on, from your CMS? Um, I'm gonna clarify this a little bit more. So if you have um, a long video that's playing for an entertainer, like a, let's see, uh, you know, three or four minutes long, okay? Is it better to play that long form playing content or is it better to play small segments of a video in that museum environment? So you have people that are gonna be there for a while. Right. Who would you like to go first? 
<laughs> uh, we'll start with you. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'd recommend is an analytic solution so that they can gauge how long people are actually watching that content for to see if a formative video is actually working and doing what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, Let's work under the assumption that people are standing there and watching the four minute video. In that case, managing less pieces of content is always gonna be more efficient than more pieces of content. Uh, you just wanna make sure that it's compiled well and that you've got a good formatting. And uh, I would recommend to use one four minute video. Okay. Maybe go over to yeah, George. I, I, I agree with, uh, with Jeff, that's, the platform, platform, excuse me, you're using shouldn't mean that you have to compromise on uh, on your workflow. So if your video is four minutes long, the platform should let you play individual pieces of that, or time it as ours does, uh, or indeed play it as one lo one long video. But the the broader answer behind the question is, um, as Jeffrey says, is really it's about the the dwell time of those people and what's appropriate for how long they are in front of the screen. And, you know, I, I, I have to agree with both of the guys. <laughs> and at that point, you know, it, it's, it goes into really what's going to work best in regards to the CMS that you use, right? Um, and so I think the only thing that I would add in addition to what the gentlemen above me have kind of already stated is the fact that, you know, if we were running smaller segments of these videos, what we could potentially do, and I believe that we're going to be able to all achieve that goal, uh, is to actually provide some unique uh, engagement capabilities so that if somebody's dwelling on it, let's continue to play that video, or if somebody goes ahead and walks away, we can go ahead and potentially restart the video or provide new advertisements, things of that nature, to potentially might attract the next person that's walking through that environment. Um, and so we can engage with those sensors and do a little bit more uh, if we are working with shorter videos versus the longer video. But again, it, it really comes down to you know looking at what you have and how you potentially are tracking the information and then just making the judgment call at that point. Am I getting a better uh, time of a person standing watching the full length of it? Or are they grabbing the 10 seconds? Are they grabbing the 30, first 30 seconds? Where, where can we expand on? Oh, that's perfect. Um, okay, so I would also like to add just based off of uh, personal experience, if you're streaming, make sure you like break it up into smaller segments or better yet, no, uh, make sure it's on the player, okay? And not streaming when you're doing long video. That's the correct way to say it. Uh, learn that experience. <laughs> wow, did that hurt. Okay, so thank you guys so much for taking the time. And I know we're gonna receive tons of questions thereafter. So um, please keep us, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Please keep us in the loop as to updates and changes within your companies, okay? So thank you so much for attending. Thanks, thank Nicole. So much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Okay, bye. Have a good day. Bye. You too. Awesome. Oh, well, that was so great. Wasn't yeah. It? Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everybody else. Yes. Way to go, Nicole, for taking on four hour-long sessions by herself and moderating four completely different panels. Yeah. Like all of those were such different subject matter and mm -hmm. she knew what she was talking about for every single one. So just to echo and reiterate everything that Gary said earlier, she knows her stuff. She is fantastic. We are very grateful to her. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.